Hello, hello, welcome back. So if the title is not evident, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of brushes that I really like using for cream or liquid products. Some of the brushes I'm going to talk about, if I say I used them in a video earlier, I literally did use them in a video earlier to apply the makeup that I'm wearing now. And YouTube takes a while to process them, so don't freak out if you can't find the video. They'll eventually pop up, and then you can go see how I use the brushes and what products I use and how I applied them. So starting off with foundation, because foundation is where I start typically, I've got five selections. So you've definitely seen the Bisciotto FD01 before. I have a whole video dedicated to just using this one to apply foundation. So this is a pretty dense goat, psychoho goat brush, uh, African rosewood handle, 24K plated gold ferrule, clear coating, the standard fancy brush. But this brush works really well for foundation because it gives you a medium to full coverage and then you can keep building as you're going on. Definitely not a sheer brush and doesn't work terribly well for the liquid formulas that work better for your hands. For example, the... Makeup Forever, Face and Body, MAC Face and Body. It surprisingly works pretty well with something like the Dior Face and Body, which has a little bit more slip to it, for lack of better term. It works surprisingly well with that one. And it also works really well for blush because of that round surface. You can get control and then really apply blush to just a target area. So it works well for that. It also works well for cream bronzer, except for I normally don't use cream bronzer, I usually use liquid bronzer. So this one, you can really kind of buff it out and then kind of get your give your face a colorful sun-kissed glow to it. So this is kind of an all-purpose face brush for me. Really love it. You've also I've also got a dedicated video to the Chikohodo T3. This is also Psychoho Goat. Uh, the Takumi series has a lighter handle, so some of you may not like that, but otherwise it's a pretty great brush on the smaller side for sure. But something I really came to appreciate about this brush is that it's sort of like rounded corner on the edges. Like if you've used other flat top brushes and then you use this one, those rounded corners really do make a difference in making uh, applying your base easy. And then again, this is a smaller brush, so you can apply blush with it, no problem. This is the Sephora Mini Mineral Powder. I don't know if they sell this one anymore, but this is what I usually keep in my go kit. This is usually what I keep in my go kit right here so I can apply makeup on the go. There's my foundation, mascara, all the other stuff is in here. But this applies foundation well, applies blush. Uh, if you can find it, it's probably on eBay or something. I recommend it. It's actually a really good brush. Synthetic fibers, of course. It's not Fude, and some of the brushes in here won't be Japanese Fude. But it's a good brush for foundation and for blush as well. Okay, stars of the show. Fupa 01, now discontinued. By, uh, this is by Koyuda. The Fupa 01 is made of Tankoho goat hair. This BZ01 by Hokodo is made of, I believe, Psycho Go Hair. They're both these little chubby round brushes. The Hokodo is ever so slightly smaller. And the feel of it is a little less dense. And it's cut, not cut, it's molded a little differently where it's a little more flat on top compared to the Fupa. So essentially they have the same working surface area. Uh, in my earlier video where I applied my makeup, I did the Hokodo on one side and the Fupa on the other side. You really can't see a difference. There's essentially no time difference. Uh, time difference being how long it takes me to apply and or blend out the foundation. So they're essentially the same. I do just prefer the Fupa a little bit more, but that's probably a sentimental thing because, well, one of the reasons is it does stand flat on the surface. The Hokodo has a rounded one, and it just, you see, you see that wobble? It just doesn't stand up straight on by itself. But otherwise, functionally, they're the same. If you missed out on the Fupa 01, the Hokodo BZ1 is a great substitute. Okay, I'm going to go into blush brushes next. And even though I normally use contour, because a lot of the, not even though I normally do concealer, because a lot of my concealer brushes are actually eye brushes. 
So I'll talk about the smaller brushes later. Blush brushes for now. These are the two that I really like for cream and liquid blush. This is one of the Hokodo dual fiber brushes. I, oh dear. I forgot to look up the name of it, but it's synthetic mixed with goat. And then this is if you would prefer a paddle brush to apply your blush, this is really good at it. But in the video earlier, and this is why this brush is dirty, I used the cheek brush from the Koyudo line, the Koyudo Saikoho line with the cherry birch handles. The current iteration of this brush looks exactly the same. Same brush head, the only thing different is the printing on the handles. This one just says Koyudo on it. But this is a smaller sized round blush brush and it works really well to be able to control the area where you apply blush apply blush and blend it out. Same thing with this one, because it's a paddle, you get a little bit more control, but it's roughly the same. This one you can use to pat down, so this one works better as well for those, um, what, what's the word for it? Those really, uh, those cream to powder formulas, because with those you, I typically with cream to powder formulas, I pat. And then with true liquid and true cream, I tend to buff more. So just a minor difference. Both of these are great. Let me look up right now what the Hakuhodo might be because it's going to bug me. Okay. And something that the Hakuhodo uh, website has now is you can filter by the different brush, brush bristles. So that's really nice because otherwise you'd be looking forever for the brush you're trying to find. This brush is the J545 Duo Fiber Powder and Liquid Round Flat Brush. There we go. Now I can move on with the video in peace. Okay, for bronzer, this is gonna be a little bit unconventional, but I really like the Chikohodo T4 for liquid bronzer. And if you watched the video earlier, I show you how effortless it is. Normally, I wouldn't recommend a not super dense brush such as this. It's dense, but it's not super dense. The reason I do recommend it for this is because the lack of density leads to sheer product application. So if you go fast, you can really apply it well. And then even though the cream and the liquid will make the bristles clump a little bit, it doesn't matter if you're buffing it all over your face and blending out anyway. So um a little bit unconventional but because it is uh, for me anyways a bigger cheek brush it works really well for area of effect things like bronzer so you can see how it really kind of like splays out a bit as i buff with it good for bronzer more conventional for bronzer would be the Hakuhodo Big Fan Brush. So this one you can really sweep and cover a lot of area. It might not fit into your pans depending, but you can kind of also work for cream contour because of that shape. You can see surface area contact. It's quite controlled because of that dome shape. So you can also use this for cream contour. Doesn't work so well on the nose and eyes, but I have other brushes for that. So moving on to contour brushes. You're not going to be terribly surprised, but here we go. <laughs> the Chikohodo T6. Uh, this grayish color was what I used for my contour earlier in the video. You can go check that out once YouTube finally decides to release it from processing. But this one works, <clears throat> works well with powder contour, works well with liquid contour. It just works well with contour, period, because of everywhere that it fits. And then I did take it down the nose and through the socket earlier. It's just... A good brush and then um, if you haven't seen this before it's kind of like an oval with a flame shape it's just super good and then another contour brush that I really like is the Stelazi contour L308 and then again this has that like sort of like dome shape that I really like fits in nicely this is dyed goat hair even though you're not supposed to use dyed goat with liquid and cream products I mean <laughs> If it works, it works, so, and I like it. So this one fits well here, fits well here, fits well here. It's like overall great like contour brush. Like Stelazi makes some really solid brushes. I really need to gather up my Stelazi brushes to do a video on them sometime. And there's another one. This is the Shakuda foundation brush. Um, I don't like this so much for foundation, but it does work really well for contour because look how perfectly it fits there. And you kind of just like go like this 
brush up a little bit, you're done. And then because of this angled edge, you can really get down the nose, fit it into the corner of the eye and nose here, really carve that area out. Doesn't do the eyes, but it does the nose well. So it's also a medium sized brush. So if you wanted to use this for blush as well, this would be a good option. And then because of the roundedness, you're not gonna get a harsh edge. You're kind of gonna blend out the product as you tap along. So I don't like it so much for foundation because it does feel just a little bit ever too coarse to like really be like rubbing all over my face. And whenever my face is dry and flaky like it is right now, it does exfoliate, micro exfoliate my face a little bit compared to the, these three brushes, these three brushes don't do it. This, um, sorry, the Hokodo BZ1, the Fupa 01 discontinued, the BES, no, BFD1, do not micro exfoliate my face. The, this one does, and the Chikohodo Takumi T3 does micro exfoliate just ever so slightly. But this one does definitely micro exfoliate, so I prefer this one for blush and for contour. Uh, moving on to highlight brushes, and this is where it starts getting a little confusing. <clears throat> Sorry. This is honestly my favorite cream um, highlight brush. This is an eye brush from the Koyudo Sowa Story, the 2019 holiday set. It's a very dense round bullet brush, and that is exactly why it works well for highlight. If I'm not using a brush, I use my finger. So guess what? This brush it's pretty much like my finger and then I just kind of pat and blend it out. So if you don't want to get your hands on this by buying the whole set, honestly, any brush that's an eye brush that's suitable for your eyes is a good face highlight brush. So like the that's why I like face highlight brush. I mean face using eye brushes on the face because they fit well into the little areas. And I really get control like if I was using my fingers to blend things out. So that being said, Sonia G, Worker 2, good highlight brush as well. This one I use for concealer. I'll talk about it a little bit later. The other highlight brush I can really recommend is the Shu Urmura 15. This is a Kolinsky brush, really thick. Again, this is just really good for patting out and blending. This is discontinued, I'm sorry. But if you see a brush like this, whether it's in goat or synthetic, this really big, thick paddle. This is fantastic for applying highlight. It's just really, really great. And then if I turn it on its side, I get that precision. So if you find anything like this, if it's synthetic, it's probably going to be soft. Like I've never run into a rough synthetic brush from a good brand. So if you find something like this, it's a great highlight brush. I don't currently have any in my collection that are like this and synthetic. So I'm just showing you the general concept and idea. So then you can go out there and find your own. Okay, the rest of the brushes from here on out are gonna be eye brushes, but some of them I use for uh, concealer. So the really true concealer brushes that I use are something like this. This is a very small paddle um, synthetic brush. This is meant for the eyes from Estee Lauder. But today I used it to just apply product to pinpoint conceal. And then to blend out the product, I use the Urban Decay finger brush, the F110. So a very small precision brush to apply product on the spots. And then this one, again, is like using your finger to tap, tap, tap it out, except for unlike your finger, this picks up a lot less product. So then you can kind of just go boink, 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 boink. And then it blends the stuff out and your blemish is covered or my blemish is covered. So concealer brush for pinpoint concealing around the face. A dream team would be a small precision brush. We can just buy a paintbrush from an art store and some very thick, dense bullet brush like this. Um, I'm trying to think. I know Hourglass has one. It's like a very short stubby brush, not quite as wide as this. That one's also good for doing this type of thing. I should have pulled it, but I couldn't find it. So that type of brush from this sort of rounded dome shape, thick bullet brush. If you look for bullet eye brush, um, it should come up. So if you find it in goat, synthetic, whatever, it's really good for concealer. 
I've never run into a powder concealer, so I think it's redundant to say synthetic works best for cream and liquid concealer. Another type of brush I do like is something like a flat concealer brush. This one's very thin and very flat. Uh, and this is a discontinued Smashbox brush, but the same idea is if you see a brush like this, um, it's probably going to be a good idea to add it to your collection if you really like using cream and concealer. I mean cream and liquid concealers or other face products. Something I like about this one is because it's so thin and so precise, I can really clean up around the edges of my lips or clean up the edges of my eyes, but the flat surface as well makes it good for patting stuff in. It doesn't pat in concealer as effortlessly as a round domed brush like this would, but for many people, this will be your standard concealer brush. And honestly, you can use it for eyes too. So anything like this would be recommended for cream eyeshadow, cream concealer. And if you really wanted to, <laughs> it'd be a lip brush as well. But I tend to be really wacky with my brush usage. So under eye concealer, big, thick, fluffy paddle. This is a Sonia G Worker 2. Sonia G, Worker 3. So depending on how much coverage you want for your under eye area um, concealer, this one is a little bit longer, so you have a little bit more build up time with it. You, it starts off a little bit more sheer and you can blend it out a little more. This one goes on, this one will go on strong almost right away, but hey, it works. So two goat, undyed goat eye brushes for area of concealer and also around the nose. Another brush that I really like for using, doing under eye concealer is the Sue Devitt uh, eye base brush. This is made of Kalinsky, also discontinued, but again, I'm showing you the type of brushes you should look for. So a very thick, fluffy paddle, and then it's just so effortless. You pick up the product, these two brushes, you pick up the product in the pan and you just like pat and apply and as you go along and blends it in, it's just a really beautiful finish if you have these big, thick, fluffy paddles. Okay, eye brushes. Um, it's gonna be no surprise, Kalinsky Filbert paddle brushes. This one I used earlier for doing my entire eye look from base to color to shimmer and a little bit of lining with another cream shadow. So this one is so great, just like the Smashbox one because you got this paddle and you've got this really incredibly thin edge, the Smashbox more so, but the thin edge allows you to do things like line your eyes. You see a little bit of that sort of greeny chrome there. So you use the flat side to apply your base and then a little bit more on the lid color and then your liner color and because it's Kalinsky or in this case synthetic after washing the brush never really flares out so you get oh you so you always get precise control with it and then also it's really easy to just wipe it off on a rag and then microfiber cloth sorry not rag microfiber cloth and then clean it off for the next color or on the back of your hand if you're really lazy like me okay if you're looking to blend your eyeshadow, if you have a little bit more working time with your eyeshadow, like you're not using like the Armani eye tints or any of that stuff, and you really have time to play with it, or you're using a jumbo pencil, crayon, that type of thing to do your eyeshadow base, these two brushes are really great for working with that and then blending it over this one because this one is larger and there's a little bit less control. So Worker 3 is slightly smaller and gives you a little bit more control over where you stop the edge of the eyeshadow. If you prefer a round blending brush, this one by Hourglass, this is the number four. It's on, I guess it would be considered on the smaller side for a blending brush, but I, I call it a medium brush. Um, if you Even if you have monoliths, this does work very well. You just start closer to the eyelash line and then you just kind of work your way up and it's just a really nice brush. The other brush, other glass brush I mentioned earlier is about like half this uh, length and then it's domed and it's denser and that's the one that I use for blending out the pinpoint concealing. 
another brush that <laughs> this is actually a newer one that I really like for cream shadow is uh, this coat this sort of fluffy edge thing gives me a nice diffuse blending and then I can also turn it on its side to use here uh oh connection is unstable I'm gonna wait until that message goes away before I continue talking Okay, I think we're back. I had a little message on connect connection unstable thing pop up earlier. So starting from the beginning, this is a Koyudo horse brush. And then same idea with a paddle. It comes out and then comes back in. So that edge does, that edge, that tip gives you more control if you want to place color, but also the f fat fluffy edge gives you blending power. So I really like these sort of like diamond tipped uh, brushes and horse is a pretty good material to use with cream shadow if you don't have super sensitive eyes. And this is actually extraordinarily soft for a horse eye brush. And let's see. If you can find a synthetic brush that's shaped round like this, this is also a good brush for doing the outer edge crease work a little bit under the eyes. Oh yeah, this one works under the eyes too because of that edge here. But yeah, if this is a Koyudo BP-036, I've talked about this one um, a lot. It's discontinued now, but if you can find a synthetic brush like this, um, it works really great. There's one from Urban Decay that I tried out. I don't like that one because it's really stiff and not quite bendy enough at the tip. So skip that one. I'm still trying to find a good brush. Goat, if it's a goat brush shaped like this, it doesn't work because it kind of is more fluffy and it's not quite the same level of bouncy. This is not stiff, but it is firm. The Urban Decay one is firm. The Hakuhodo uh, similarly shaped ones are too floppy. So I'm still trying to find a good dupe for this, this one. But if you keep your eyes on the lookout, this is a great brush for both eyes, pinpoint concealing, and then I also use it for lip once in a while. And then finally, cream or pencil eyeliner. I really like using the Urban Decay liners. They have a little bit more play time. So what I usually do is I line my eyes and then I take a straight liner brush like this Mizuho one and then use it to kind of really spread it out under the eyes. So yeah, that kind of covered up my, covers all my cream and liquid brush recommendations really quick. Oh yeah, I've definitely used this one for liquid eyeshadow before or liquid eyeshadow, <laughs> liquid eyeliner before. There was this one video where I was applying one of those liner magnetic lashes and then I didn't like the brush on the liner, liner slash glue. So I just used this brush and got a really close edge or really close to the edge, a really thin line. Works fantastic for this. This is probably one of my favorite eyeliner brushes ever. It's just so, so, so thin and precise. You could draw hairs with this. It makes a good eyeshadow, not eyeshadow, eyebrow brush too, but it is a little bit on the smaller side for that. So unless you're really like drawing hairs in, this is a eyeliner brush. I'm not sure why they don't mark it as a brow brush actually. And of course, cream lipstick, but with a cream lipstick, you can use pretty much any brush you want. Here's another one, another Kolinsky one by Koyudo. Um, this one's a little bit on the smaller side. So what I actually use for this one is eyeshadow. So if I have a color that I want to hide in my crease and not go above, this one fits perfectly for me right there. So <laughs> this is a lip brush slash eyeshadow brush for me. But otherwise my standard and forever favorite for cream or applying cream lipstick will be the Chikohodo lip brush. This is from the Z series. This is the Z7. And I prefer square lip brushes because it allows you to get a sharp cupid's bow if you want, but you can also do a round cupid's bow fit really easily. And then it's just so pretty and it pops right in like that. And then if you don't want to carry around your bullet lipstick, you just load up the brush for the day, pop it in your purse, in your pocket, anywhere really. 
in your boyfriend's pocket because it's so small he's not going to notice it's there. And then just pull it out when you're wanting to reapply your lipstick and slap it on. So yeah, that kind of sums up all the brushes. Like there's a lot of eye brushes that I use for face. If that's the main takeaway you get from this, find synthetic eye brushes and use them for your face. But other than that, the big one I really wanted to talk about were the foundation brushes. All of these can be used for blush as well because of that round, two things, because of two things. The round dome shape gives you surface area control. And also the brushes that I recommend are on the smaller side to start with. If you're using big, big um, domed foundation brushes, obviously it's not gonna work. So hence why I like the small ones. And the only other thing is this brush really. So you can use this for cream blush, cream contour, cream bronzer, really versatile brush. So yeah, now I'll just go through the questions or comments, live chat, and then answer questions. Okay, let's go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you'll be able to see the get ready of me later. You got the Hokodo in your CD Japan order a while ago. Deciding between the Koyudo BP-013 and Chikohodo T11. I don't own either of those brushes, but I'm pretty sure Sonia has at least half a dozen posts on the BP-013, so go check that out. The Chikohodo T11 is newer, so there's going to be no comparisons to that, but just looking at the dimensions of the T11, it's going to be a smaller brush, kind of something like this. But I'm kind of like not expecting it to be as dense as the this Yoda one for now, but I'll probably get it eventually to compare. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> Beautylish crashed. Okay, I'm not surprised for the Sonya G ho holiday set. Ooh. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad you guys were eventually able to get your brushes. Mostly people chatting about getting the Sonya G holiday set, so I'm not going to address those. Mm -hmm. I think um, between Michelle Wang and Kinky Sweat, uh, there was a lot of publicity brought to the Sonya G brushes. They're not mainstream, but they I guess they're mainstream enough among... Um, uh, what, what do you call them? Makeup addicts. Uh, I did, and I did not experience the crash like you guys did, so I've got mine coming to me soon. Okay. Yeah, the brushes are kind of short. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe someone should make like stick on handles or something. <laughs> yeah, the set this year is meant for travel. So when she said that the sky face and eye brushes were meant for travel, I was kind of looking at them going, really? The handles are almost standard size and length. So, oh well, you can't make everybody happy. <laughs> If stores started stocking Hakuhodo, Chikuhodo, and Koyudo, I would think the brush was, I mean, I would think the world was ending. However, you can find Japanese brushes on Amazon now, so it's starting to become more mainstream. I saw a demo showing that Kalinsky picked up way more pigment than hairs for other brushes, but they seem to be hard to find now. If you're referring to Toshia-san's um, lip brush comparison, for those of you who don't know, he took two square lip brushes, kind of like this, uh, one of them was made of Kalinsky, one of them was made of squirrel, not squirrel, weasel. He picked up the same lipstick and then used them to apply to the back of his hand. And it was very evident that the Kalinsky brush had superior pigment lay down. So that's why Check Sandy's talking about that. Wondering if you uploaded a Koyomo hair video live. I have not even done that video. So after I made the video saying I was going to do the Koyomo hair video first, a bunch of people decided to flood the um, 
checklist, not checklist, the survey. So now Sybe Coho is first. So I'm working on the Sybe Coho script. And that should be released sometime next week. So it'll be Sybe Coho, Koyomo, then Kolinsky. That's the um, going ranking right now in terms of popularity. Yep. So if that's it, I hope you found this video helpful and I'm going to pop off and go do other stuff now. The replay of this should be up before I even get the brush list up. It takes a while to kind of go through and put down all the brushes. So I hope you're able to take away from this video what types of brushes to look for to do cream and liquid makeup. The essential parts is goat or synthetic and if you're doing like a base brush, you'll want it to be dense. But if you're doing uh, cream products, something that's only of medium density is perfectly fine because you still get an airbrushed finish with the makeup. And if it's a liquid product, you might have to work quickly. If you're using a liquid blush, put it on some surface first, pick it up with the brush, and then go in and apply it to the face. Don't put the blush straight on your face and then blend it out because it might sink in and stain your skin. The other way around, it's, it all distributes through the brush. So then as you apply, it blends out. You can see what I mean by that if you watch my demo video from earlier. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.